Okay, we're back. Hi, everybody. So today we're going to dive into uh, PYFLTK. And so the first thing that I've done here is I have downloaded the FLTK uh, documentation HTML. So I'm going to extract this or untar it. It's a tar gz file and I actually good news is that Windows now has the ability to use tar. So if you open a, a CMD command box or prompt in Windows you can also type in if you go to the directory uh, I think in Windows you have to type in dir to see what you have but if I type in now tar dash extra extract uh, zip compression file and then the FLTK documentation that I downloaded then you can simply now have a local copy. I'm now going to CD into my directory documentation HTML and now once I'm in here if I type in ls I get a whole slew of files no problem though all I need to type in the only one I'm really interested in is called index.html and you can see it at the bottom there and so now when I start that when I open it up with Firefox I arrive at my local copy of uh, the um, FLTK documentation and so we're going to be referring to this constantly and so it's a good idea that you have this on hand while you're coding. Now uh, the first thing we're going to do when we code is let's let's start a file here so we don't have anything right now um, let's create a file called uh, win1.py and what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to import the library and the way I'm going to import it is I'm going to say from FLTK import star now for those of you that know Python some of you might be saying uh, that's not a good way to import stuff you should just use import FLTK or you could even go something like uh, import FLTK as uh, FL or something like that however in this specific case this is us usually you'd be right but in this specific case I want to show you something in the programming manual if we go to our classes and we go to the index the, the list is actually okay too it's just that they're all in, an, in, a, in a list but I prefer the index because now they're alpha you can see more of them online now if you'll notice look at all the names here everything starts with F capital F lowercase l underscore so there's really no danger of you using a sa the same name twice and getting into a namespace conflict uh, if you didn't if, if you just imported FLTK normally oops wrong one and if you uh, if you went import FLTK just like that then you'd have to end up typing like you'd have to type this FLTK dot FL underscore you'd have to type this all the time and so it's it's not necessary so in this specific case, because the library has FL on everything in the beginning, I much prefer just doing this. Okay, so let's go and find how to make a window. So a window here, if we click on W, uh, we're going to go to, where is W here? there it is so there's FL window let's click on that and now you get to see this wonderful hierarchy chart so what is this so now I have to kind of give you a little bit of an explanation of object-oriented programming so th think of it as the uh, 
grandfather and children. Okay? So the grandfather, or the, the base class, is at, called FL widget. Then from that, you derive FL group, and then from that, you derive FL window. Now, what does this mean? It means that right now, we're in the FL window class reference, and all these methods that we're going to be looking at um, are, can be applied to a window, like, for example, hide. And there's another one that's going to be important here, and that is show, and there it is. Now, if we click on show, it's, it just gives a description of what it does. It says, puts the window on the screen. So the constructor is the same name as the class. So here it is. Okay, FL window and FL window. Notice that there's two of them. This one takes, so this is like the C++ kind of uh, uh, documentation, which I'm going to translate to you now. I think it's pretty clear what int is. Int is an integer. Now, what's this one? const char star. So I'm going to make a little uh, translation table here. So let's open up another uh, kind of document here and let's make a translation table. C, oops, not there. C++ and the translation to Python. Okay, so first first word. Okay, let's do the first translation. Const char star. What does that mean in Python? It's a string. So now that whenever you see const char star, you know that that's a string in Python. So that's the translation there. And you notice it has a, a default argument of zero. Again, there's a translation for that. A zero translates to none in Python. Okay? And notice that there's two of them. So here we can make an FL window like this, and then we can make another FL window like this. This one takes x, y, and width and height. The X and Y is basically where it shows up on the screen. So let me show you the screen first. So let me open up a paint program here. And I will show you if this is your screen, let's say this is your monitor. Okay, and your monitor is probably looks something like this. Then this location right here at the very top left hand corner is location 0 comma 0 just like math right you know x and y coordinates in math there is one important difference though going in this direction is x just like math but now here's the difference going in this direction now is y notice that this is going down is positive y so the y axis is flipped uh, in comparison to a standard, you know how a standard math graph would go y and x, and, and, and 0 would be in the middle. And as you go up, x increases. As, as you go to the right, x increases. In this case, the x is the same. The, the 0 coordinate is not at the bottom left-hand corner, but at the top left-hand corner. And the y increases going down. So therefore, this, let's say this location right here could be 100 and 100 down. And, and what are these numbers? They're pixels. So now the question begs, how do you know how many pixels are on your screen? Well, that's a good question. And I will help you answer that right now. So if we go back to classes and we go to index, 
And there is a, if we go to F, F is right there. There's a very important class called FL. And so if we click on that one, we can scroll down here and find uh, HW and H. Let me see if I can find those guys. Uh, there it is. There. So it says returns height in pixels of the main screen work area. Okay? Now, here's another translation. What are those two uh, full colons? So let's go to our translations page. And we'll say these two full colons are the same as a dot in Python. OK? So that means, so now if we go back, Let's, let's actually write something in the program to kind of demonstrate all this stuff. And uh, let's try it. So let's say, do, let's do something like this. Let's say screen width at, uh, is equal to uh, fl dot w. And it's a function call. OK? And screen height is equal to fl dot uh, H and that's a function call. Oops, I got it. So now let's actually go and create the the window. I didn't actually have to do this, so perhaps right now um, I could. In fact, let's just try printing S W and S H. Okay. And let, let's, that's it. Let's save this program. And um, let's run it. And so you see that is right now, that's the size of my screen. OK, so I get the, the width and the height. OK, so let's delete this stuff here. And we saw how we could get the width and height of our screen. But let's actually create a window. So I'm going to call this variable win. And now I'm going to create an FL window. Now, once again, take a look at the documentation, how I'm doing that. So if I go back to classes, index hierarchy, and I go to uh, the window, I'm going to scroll down here. So this is called an FL window, and the constructor is right there. I have two ways of doing it. Let's try the first one. Let's just provide the width and the height. Notice this one has a default argument, so I don't have to type it in. So let's try it. Let's make it uh, 300 by 300. Okay. Now what I need to do is I need to be able to make the window appear on the screen. So I need to use show. And that's right there. I think I, I you saw it before. So it's win oops dot show. Now comes the important part. Now comes probably the most important line of this program, and that is something called fl.run. And so what is that? Let's go back to the documentation, and let's take a look at what fl.run is. Notice it starts with fl. So let's go back to the classes and index, and let's go, ba let's go back to f for fl. Remember, I told you this was an important one. So let's find now run. Let's go control F run. And there it is. And so let's take a look at what this says. As long as any windows are displayed, this calls FL rate repeatedly. 
When all the windows are closed, it returns zero. A normal program will end main when re when with return f fl run. Notice again, it's got the uh, colon colon. So in our program, it translates to dot. But essentially, what line six is is it puts this program into an infinite loop. Yep, that's right, you heard me correctly. Line six puts this program into an infinite loop so that it will never end. And what it does is it waits for events to occur. We'll discuss what events are later, but for now I can say there are things like mouse clicks, keyboard presses. So if I run this program, this is what I get. I get a window appearing on the screen that I've created. I can't do anything with it. I can move it around the screen. But the size of the window is 300 wide and 300 high pixels. And I can minimize it. And I can close it. And when I close it, FL run returns. And that's the end of FL run. So right there, you're looking at the skeleton of a program. However, um, we can add more things into the constructor for the window. For example, we can add the title, which is a string. So therefore, and this is one of the cool things I like about FLTK, is that the location of the arguments matters. Okay, so let's change this to a 400. So that's um, width, height. Width is 300, height is 400. And now comes the title. And the title is a string, so I have to represent it as a string. I can put a string in. And now if I run it, notice at the top, it has the string I've typed in. Okay? Now, once again, I want to emphasize that I'm, I'm getting this from here. Uh, yeah. Let's go to the top here. Right there. Okay, so it's a default argument. I don't actually have to type it. However, there is another one, and that one I can actually specify x and y. So let's go back to the documentation. Not that one. And let me show you how that works. So at this point, I can specify, for example, um, 0, 0. And now if I run this, the program will start the, the window at the very top left-hand corner. In other words, this corner of the box is the location. So if I can show you that on uh, a paint program, when I put the window on the screen, then this location is the x and y location. This is x comma y right here. Okay? So let's say for example I want my um, window to be let's say 300 pixels down. So I would I would simply go x I would leave as 0, but this one I would say 300, or actually, instead of doing 300, that's the size, let me try 200. So now I've got, oops, I messed up there. So now, if I run that, notice the window will start 200 pixels, will open at that location, 200 pixels. So here I have a window that I've created that is at going to be at location 300x, 300y, 400 width, and 250 high. So I just like to 
put these um, variables here so that you can see them x, y, width, and height. And this is the title. So now when I run this, there it is, I get it. Okay? Let's add something now to the window. So in order to add something to it, I'm going to have to uh, add them, add widgets to it. Uh, there's a couple of different ways to do this, but the, the way that I prefer to do it is to go win.begin. And then I'll have win.end. And now, every, anything I, any widgets which I create in between this begin and end will be added to the window automatically. So let's go back to the documentation. So if we look in the documentation, and in a nice way, by the way, to look for these methods isn't simply scrolling down through here. This is actually, I find this a little bit tedious to look for them this way. A much easier way to look for them is to come over here to the left side pane. And if you find the widget you want, in other words, this one's FL window, if you click on this little arrow, it shows you what the, uh, what the methods are. And so in this case, notice the constructors are at the top. I can click there and go to the constructor right away. This is probably an easier way to uh, get to where you want to go. It's important that you can navigate the documentation properly. So notice that, as I said, the constructor is at the top and there's two of them. And so there's two different ways of doing them. And there they are. Okay, But now, let's see if there is a begin. Notice that there is no begin. It's alphabetical, right? So there's border, but I don't see a begin. Why is this? Well, if we go back to the hierarchy here, if the method, if, in other words, FL window inherits from FL group. So let's go and take a look at the methods of FL group. All I need to do is click on this picture and now I'm in FL group. I can now click here and now scroll down and let's see if I see begin. There it is. So now let's click begin and what this means essentially is that since a window is inherited from a group then a window will have, have all the methods of the group. And so this says sets the current group so that you can build widget tree just by constructing the widgets. So in other words I don't have to go add I don't have to specify where it's going to be added to as long as I create the widgets in between these, these two begin and end, they'll automatically be added to my window. So how do I, what would I want to put in there? Well, let's do something simple. How about let's make a button and let's call it but. And let's say but equals fl underscore button. Now, how do we make a button? We got to go back to the documentation. And now, let's kind of close this one and let's scroll up and find fl button. It's alphabetical again. And there it is. So let's open that one up. And look, there's the first one. That's the constructor. Constructor means basically in uh, Python language, it just means the initializer or how you create it. So let's click on it and there it is. So the arguments are int, 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 int. X, Y is the location, width and height. And now if you guys remember what const char star was, that was a string. And that is the label. And that has a default argument of none so we don't have to specify one but we can if we wish so let's go back to our code and we'll say we want this widget to and oh and by the way this widgets location is relative to the window okay so in other words 
Um, think of this now. Th this big uh, rectangle is your screen. But now when you're creating the button, if you want to put the button here, then this location is relative to the uh, top left-hand corner of the window. OK? Not to the screen. So therefore, let's try and make a widget. Let's say we want it 20 pixels down, 20 pixels. Or we could actually just make it at the top left-hand corner. How about we just go 0, comma 0, and we'll make it uh, 70 pixels wide and 30 pixels high. That's it. Let's run the program. And there's the button. Notice it's, I can click it. I can push down on it. But nothing happens. And also, um, there's, it doesn't say anything. So therefore, um, let me try to put a title in here as a string. And I'll say uh, something like, click me. And so now when I run it, it says, it, it puts a label on it. OK? Um, at this point, let's go take a look at some of the attributes of the button. So let's go back to the documentation. And what, does, what can we do with the button? So let's take a look at these guys here. And let's, so there isn't really anything here that I'm interested in showing you at this point. However, there's a, there are many things which we can do, but they're not visible here. So once again, let's go back to the hierarchy diagram, or inheritance diagram. And what does FL button inherit from? Well, it's widget. And in fact, I want to state to you right now that widget is the base class for all widgets in FLTK. So if we click this one, now we're going to have a lot of things. So if we click this arrow here, now we have a lot of things we can do. OK? Um, one of them, which is kind of cool, remember this is alphabetical, is color. So let's click on color. Um, notice that there's three of them. Wow, what's the difference? Well, here's something really important in FLTK. And this is different from many other toolkits. And I really love it. It's a really efficient, and as I said in the beginning video of this course, it's concise. And so let me open up the paint program here again and kind of I'll discard this stuff and I'll show you. So in FLTK and in, in any widget tool set, there are get and set methods. Many toolkits will use these terms and they'll add them on to the attribute. They'll say like get color, set color. FLTK doesn't do that. So how do, you, how do you get them? So a get would be like this. It would be dot color. And you don't put anything in the brackets. So if you put no arguments, it's a get. A set, on the other hand, is if you go dot color, but now you provide an argument in here. As soon as you provide the argument, it's a set. When you provide no arguments, it's a get. That means that whatever your widget is here, and you'll have a widget here, that means that in, in this case, this instance where you set the color, uh, it's not going to return anything. But this one is going to return a value. So let's take a look at the documentation and see if that matches. 
So now, notice this is a this doesn't have any arguments inside color, so it's a get. It says gets the background color of the widget. Now, how do we know what it returns? So this is what we're looking at right here. Notice, so this is something that's different uh, from Python and its C++, and that is that what comes before the function is what it returns. So in this case, this function, and how do we know it's a function? Because it has brackets. So we, we wouldn't actually type FL widget, colon, colon, in our case, right, this FL widget is uh, not there. This FL widget is but. So for example, um, if we did but dot, that's the, that's the widget. But is the widget in this case. And so it's going to return an FL color. So the first thing on the line is what is returned. So let's scroll down. And notice in this case, OK, actually the, the argument is here, not up there. So here, there's no argument. But here, there is an argument. And it's an FL color data type. And that one sets it. And notice here, void means returns nothing. So let's go back to our translation table and let's say void also means none. Okay? So let's maybe we should put those two together. And so there. So zero or void means means none uh, in Python. OK, so now comes the problem of what is an FL color? What is this? So if we click on FL color, uh, there are built-in color types. And they are, well, right here. You can see them. And they have integer values. Okay. Um, so, for example, if you want to type one of these in, let's let's go with FL red. Okay. So if we if we go back to our code, and we say FL but dot color, and we go FL. Notice it was all caps. And now, if we run this, notice the button now becomes red. Okay. Here's something that you don't know. And that is, you don't necessarily have to put the attributes of the widget inside begin and end. In other words, this line, line 6, I could delete this line and put it out here after end. And that would, to that would be totally fine. And the reason is because I'm not actually, I'm not actually creating a new widget on line 10, I'm simply modifying an existing one. Okay, so that's important. Now the question is, uh, does it matter if you uh, leave it inside? And the answer is no, it doesn't matter. I could leave it inside uh, and it would be fine as well. Okay? Start the video. Okay. Um, a question came up, and that is, how can you choose a customized color? So, for example, you know, if, what if you don't want any of these predetermined colors? What if you want um, one that's uh, custom? Okay, so what if you want a color that is not one of these predetermined colors? You can actually create your own custom color, but you need a palette to choose from. So the way I do this is I start up Genie. It's another program. Or you can use any software that has a, a, a color viewer. And you can, in this one, you can actually go to Tools and go Color Chooser. Now, uh, FLTK, by the way, has its own, but we'd have to start it up. Um, with this, 
if you choose a color, let's say for example if I pick this shade of green, or I can change, change the shade, um, let, let me pick for example this green, I like that color. Then if you notice the red, green, blue values, it's 59, 214, and 50. So now I can go back here and if I show you in the documentation of FLTK and if we go to the uh, main page and we go to drawing things in FLTK, there is in under colors, let me scroll down here, there's one called uh, so here, this is uh, this this is actually a color map, and you can you can actually pick from there. But even if you want like a totally customized one, okay. So notice, so notice all these colors, okay, are like this one's 80, 81, 82, 83. This one's like uh, 100. This one's like 129. These pre these pre ones are always from zero to fifteen. Although you might not. So like for example here, let's just try one. But I'll show you how to do a custom one as well. But let's pick uh, let's pick this orange one here. So that's a two, and that's like eighty. So eighty plus two is ninety. So if I go over here. 80, 88 plus 2 is 90. So if I come over here and I come over here and now I go color and I type in, let's try typing in 90 here. And I run this. Notice I get kind of that orange I was looking at. So um, you, can, you can choose a color like that from the documentation. That's kind of a nice way, actually, to choose colors. But even still, if this is not enough, there is another function that's called uh, FLRGB color, and that's uh, uchar, uchar, uchar. All right, time to go back to our conversion. Okay, in our case, uh, uchar is it's actually unsigned char, but in this case it's going to be an integer. But in this case it's an integer I think only from, uh, in this particular instance it's only going to be from 0 to like uh, 255 I think. Uh, so nonetheless it's an integer. Therefore, if I go back to my code, watch what I could, notice this return, notice once again what comes before the function call. It says FL color. So that's what it returns. So therefore, now this is a function call, okay? Notice it's not a capital F. It's a lowercase f. So this is not a widget. How do you know? It doesn't start with a capital F. It's lowercase. So if I come back here and I do this, so I could, for example, I could do something like this. I could say um, my color equals fl underscore rgb color and then I could supply the numbers which I chose which were 59, 214 and 50. Let's see if I can remember that. Uh, 59, 214 and 50. Okay, then I will simply assign my color to the button and now I'll run it. And notice it's the green that I chose. So I want to show you some more features of, of the button, but in order to do that, let's move the button to the middle. So let's not say it's at 0, 0. Let's say it's at, um, let's make it 100 and uh, 100. And let's, let's just run it again and see where it is. OK, that's good. Um, now, 
let's go back to the documentation and let's go back to let's go back to uh, the widget class. Okay, so we'll go to W again for the widget class, and let's take a look at other things that we can do to widgets. Specifically, uh, let's take a look at the label. What kind of things can I do to the label? So there's label color, there's label font, label size, label type. Very interesting. Look at all these things we can do to the label. And there's also something else too, and that's uh, at the kind of at the top here under a line and I, I just happen to know this but right here if I click on align gets the label alignment notice there's no argument provided in the brackets and then there is sets the label alignment and then we were actually asked to provide an FL align variable and if we if I click on this here are all the FL align variables Okay, and notice there's the integer values here. You can type in the integer values, or you can actually type in uh, a line center, a line top, a line bottom, and so on. Okay, uh, and the cool thing about these guys is you can use more than one of them at the same time. But we'll perhaps we'll do this another time. Um, but, uh, well, I guess we could try FL align left. Let's try that one for the moment. How about this? But dot align FL, it's all capitals, align. Uh, can't type left let's run that now look where the label is it's not on the button anymore is it it's to the left of it and you can actually you can actually uh, bitwise or these guys so like for example if you wanted it like this watch Bitwise, what's a bitwise or? So let's let me try uh, let me try going to the um, beginning of this line here. Oops, I'm stuck here. Let me go to the beginning of this line and let me um, well actually let me just change it. Let me go let me go top. Okay, so now if I run this, now look where it is. You see where the label is positioned? What if I don't want it on the top and I don't want it on the left? What if I want it up here to the top and the left? So this is now this is really cool. Watch what I'm going to do. This is what's called a bitwise or. So I can now go like this. I can say vertical line bitwise or FL align left and I'll I'll or them together, and now look what happens when I run it. Here's a really nice graphic that shows what, where the label would be placed depending on the, um, the align attributes you assign to it. Okay? And so if a, ins a line inside is not set, then it, they all go on the outside. And if inside is set, then you can put them all that the label exactly where you choose. Uh, that's that's really really nice. Okay, so let's go back now to the documentation where it says label size, and um, let's go back and back. And I think we were looking at the methods here, and let's go to label size let's click on that and notice there's two of them this is a get and this is the set and this is the font size in pixels so for example I could simply 
uh, go to my document, go to my here, and if I want to increase the size of the label, I could go uh, bot dot label size and increase it to let's say a 40 point. And so now when I run this, notice look what happens. Okay? I can change the size of the label. Um, also, so here is label font, and of course now it, it says, all right, well you have to use a, an FL font data type. So let's click on FL font, and a font is an index to the internal font table. Um, okay. So the, the font types are in the enumeration. So in order to find these, uh, go to the main page, click on the main page, and then in the appendices you have FLTK enumerations, and click on enumerations, and then inside enumerations, you'll see that there are fonts right there. And if I click on that, here are all the font types. Okay, so for example, I could change it, let's say, uh, it, normal is Helvetica, but I could change it to FL Courier. So I could essentially just select this thing and then now come over to my code and type in uh, bot dot label font and then I could say FL Courier. And now, if I run this, it changes to a Courier font. Okay? And if I, if I, if you remember what the other one looked like, uh, if I comment this out, those are different. And I can, you can kind of see the difference between them. If I open another terminal and I um, have them side by side if I go Python 3 win and then I um, oh actually I should have done it like this okay and now I'll just kinda move this one over and then I'll run it again but before I run it again, I will change the font. And then I'll save it again. And now, if I run it again, and they should be different. And they are. They're different fonts. Okay. So this one on the right is Helvetica, and this one on the left is Courier. And you can choose different fonts as you wish. There's quite a few to choose from. Uh, so Now, what are some other attributes? So notice here, if we go to the FLTK main page, and then we go to common widget attributes, and we go to box types, look at all the different box types that are available to us. Okay, how about this one? This one looks pretty cool. FL oval box. So now the question is, what is a box type? Well, is that part of a widget? Because if it is, then it'll apply to a button, right? Because of the hierarchy. So let's go to our classes and let's go to index. And if we go down to widget again, which is hard to get to, right? Uh, and let's see if there is a box type here. And there is a box. There it is. So this, this one gets it, but now this one 
sets it, sets the box type for the widget. And because now I'm in FL widget, right? So like once, once again, I want to show you the object oriented beauty of this is that I'm in FL widget, but notice FL button inherits from FL widget. So therefore I can apply this method to a, uh, what was it again? FL oval, was it oval box? I'm trying to remember. Uh, I think it was FL oval. FL, or let's just try rounded box. Yeah, it was oval box. Okay, so let's go here and let me um, go back to my, oh no, wrong one. Yeah. Okay, and then I will go, uh, but no, yeah. But dot box, and I'll say FL, let's say rounded box. And now if I run this, notice the box is now round. Okay? I, it, there's focus on it though, and the focus is the dot, it's, is the dot. I can get rid of that. Um, but just to show you, I can also do oval box. Oops. Oh, it's, it's all caps. OK, so there's an oval box. And now this, like I said, this, this dotted thing that's the focus of the widget. There only happens to be one widget. So let's go see if we can actually remove that focus from the... By the way, if you're, if you're wondering that focus, uh, it's what widget is currently selected. Is, is, that's the concept. Okay, so I found this. Um, all I did was I went Control F. I searched for the word focus inside the widget methods. And I found clear visible focus. So let's try that. So if I go over to my code, and uh, this take focus for the window didn't actually work, but that's OK. I can delete this line, and I can try this. But dot clear visible focus. And now let's try running it. And to do ta-da, the dotted, the dotted rectangle, which is the keyboard focus. Because if I have more than one widget, I can, I can navigate to those widgets with the keyboard arrows. And that's what that was about. OK? So that's kind of cool. OK, so we're coming to the end of this video. And what I'd like you guys to try is I'd like you guys to take a look at this um, the index of all these widgets and try a few.